Testing, one, two, three. This will be the June 7th Community Redevelopment Agency meeting. Good evening. I'd like to call the order. Uh, Community Redevelopment Agency regular meeting. The City of Satellite Beach, June 7th, 2017, approximately 6 p.m. Please join Council Member Gibson, uh, excuse me, Member Gibson for a moment of silence and a pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you, Member Gibson. Citizens' comments. Gabe, you have anything to say? Gabe, Gabe. Gabe. Anything to say? Okay, here and none. Coming up for member comments. I have none. Just I got one. I'll make it quick. Um, as you got, you know, I'm just doing this because I don't, I won't remember to do it at the next meeting. Um, as you guys remember, we we had made an application to the Florida League of Cities to do a presentation on uh, communities for a lifetime. Stop by and say hi. All you know, community merit paramedic program and all that sort of thing. And um, Dom kind of helped push that along. I never ever heard anything back on that. Uh, I mean, didn't, I didn't hear a no, you're accepted, no, you're rejected, nothing. I just, it just didn't go anywhere. So I mean, I know it's not on there, and I, but I just kind of wanted to let you guys know that we didn't drop the ball. It just didn't happen. So just. Yeah, I never thought to ask you again either. So. Yeah, so it's. Uh, I'm not going to push it any further. I mean, it's. Uh, that's kind of where it's at, but I didn't want you guys to think I just dropped the ball. We just never heard anything back. We were supposed to hear in January, and I kind of held out, hope until February. But uh, anyhow, that's all I got. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay hearing none, no further member comments. Move on to Executive Director's report. Suzanne? Thank you. Um, just a couple informational items before I get into what's in your um, actual written report. One is that uh, city, the excuse me, the CRA attorney. We, as we've said in the past, if there's some, nothing on the agenda that's really relevant to his being here, we don't spend city dollars bringing him in. So that's why he's not here tonight. And then also, um, uh, we expect at this point that there's no upcoming business for the what would be the next regularly scheduled CRA meeting, which would be July 5th. So at this point, our intention is to cancel that unless something comes up between now and then. So um, into the informational uh, items in your report, we talked at the, uh, the last meeting, which was in February, about the Pig Legs property and the fact that uh, we've got some, uh, some interest in it and it's currently under contract. And the, the summary of this item is just to let you know that um, the, the people who are looking at purchasing that property would like to acquire a couple of adjacent parcels that will help with the configuration of what they're trying to accomplish. And in, in an effort to um, be accommodating to that fact, we've uh, extended the contract out for 60 days to allow for them to assemble those additional parcels and, and create uh, a site plan to us, which is part of their requirement under the contract with us. Uh, and once once we have a site plan that comes back and we look at that here at the CRA and if it um, the intended development does meet with your approval and what we've intended to do with the property, then that can move to the next steps. Uh, the additional, any questions on that item? I was just curious, is what the, like the Cafe O Beach property no, or no, where? Little triangular pieces of property that are on the property pretty much, but they're, uh, they're like this. around the corner, on yes. the corner. Okay. They're, they're small pieces that somebody bought with the intention of making a lot of money on them when they sold them. Okay. All right. And I'm uh, moving to the second item, which is the, um, as you know, we were working on an interlocal agreement with um, the county based on all the discussions on the CRA and that, that whole process. So. Um, I actually have seen a draft of that, initial draft of that agreement, but all the attorneys are working through it. So we're, we'll be bringing that to you hopefully by the end of this year at some point, but that's a, a work in progress, just so you know. And I have nothing further on the director report. Okay, thank you. Any questions? 
One question on the piece of property. Since we've extended it 60 days, is it still for sale? From the standpoint that if they want to keep extending it, then therefore is it pulled off the market or are we still actively searching for someone to say that it doesn't work for them? It is still for sale. And as you can see, the sign is still out there. We are still willing to entertain other contracts. There has been other interest in it. So we basically told them they're welcome to write a backup contract. So it is actively for sale at this time. Thank you. Did Paige contact you about that? Paige? Yeah, I know Paige. No, no, I haven't heard from him. Oh, okay. I think he may have somebody that might also. Oh, send him my way. Okay. I just want to make sure that because they keep extending it 60 days. Right. 60 days and there's people out there now who are willing. I don't want to lose anybody. But will those piece of properties be a problem for them as well? Possibly. I think Dallas piece of properties, nothing can ever be done with those. They're just strips. I mean, they're so non- It was on one of the drawings that we had, right? It just showed the triangle piece. Our buyers actually have secured one of them. And they're holding off on pulling the trigger on that one until they have the other piece. Because I think the one that they've actually got under contract right now and are moving forward to close is the outside piece. In other words, most easterly of those two little slivers. And, you know, obviously they don't want to buy that one until they know that they've got that middle piece because that far east one doesn't make a lot of sense to buy without the other one. You know, the purpose of doing this is so they can improve their setbacks and therefore come up with a better site plan. And I don't know that we would keep extending it. This seemed like a reasonable request to pursue these two slivers. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you very much. Moving on to agenda item six, the stuff discussed, make recommendations on proposed CRA budget for FY 2017-2018. Thank you. So the budget we've included in your packet tonight is very similar to the current year budget. I'm going to go through some of the significant revenue expenditure items and tell you about just a couple of operational changes and the reasons why. But essentially the bulk of the expenditures and revenues are in the same, along the same lines as what we've got in the current year. So just moving through briefly on the revenue sources, you can see that the TIF payment from Brevard County is $587,995. The TIF payment from the city is $1,098,580. And I would say that, as you know, we did receive the taxable values from the county. We received them after we had created this packet. So there will be some adjustments in the final budget that comes back to you. And as you know, the overall city property values were over 7% in terms of the increased value year over year. So that was good news for us. And we'll be working on the general fund budget here, which will affect the CRA budget in the next few weeks and bring all that back to you. The only other revenue source to mention, which is something that's static every year based on our October agreement, October 2012 agreement required 16 annual payments between the city and the CRA, and that $35,338 amount is the same for all of those 16 years. Under the expenditures category, the first two items there on the bottom, these do vary. They're based upon ultimately where we end up at the end of the year, how revenues and expenses come together. And whatever that total is, it is split. This excess return, tax increment finance return to the city is 65%. That's the portion for that line item, and that's $195,770. Moving down to the next item, the excess return to Brevard County at $105,415. That is a 35% calculation off of that year-end number. Moving on to page two, we've got some additional expenditure line items. The one at the top there is $185,779, which represents the transfer to the general fund 
which ties to our May 2013 agreement that allows for um, public works maintenance costs, personnel costs, um, to be transferred, um, those costs to be, for those services to be transferred from the CRA to general fund for projects that the CRA has, has um, completed that have increased the maintenance workload essentially for the public works departments. And uh, that's, that's something we look at every year, so that's that number. Um, I, that second bullet on the top of the second page, I need to make a correction to. You'll, you'll find if you were to look at the actual budget documents, the, the numbers don't add up. This number, instead of 243,355, should have been 142,564. That was a, a typo on my part, and that number that was in there incorrectly was actually just last year's number. So. Um, and anyway, so that is the transfer to general fund based on our interlocal agreement from 2013 with the CR, between the CRA and Brevard County. And another part of that is the payment to Brevard County, that third bullet, which amounts to $210,008. And, and the final uh, expense there, operating expenditure to bring to your attention, is that we, have, we are budgeting funds in the facade grant program. For this coming year, we're budgeting $75,000. And uh, we're doing that because we um, are anticipating there may be a, a plaza that is uh, a shopping plaza under new ownership that we will be able to support, you know, the facelift, which is the point of the facade grants. So that money is there. Moving down to capital improvement projects, we have two items that have uh, been under discussion and, and part of our project list uh, prior to, to this budget year. But there's a little change. So in the A1A streetscape project, we had projected in the uh, CRA uh, amendments in February 2016, the amendment to the plan, we projected $150,000 for that project in this coming budget year. We've moved it down to $100,000, um, mostly because we're applying for an FDOT landscaping grant, which will reduce the funds that we need for this, this particular item. Um, and the, uh, the <coughs> second and final one there under capital improvements is $175,000 for the Civic Center project. That is increasing because of uh, other things we have to do with the project. Um, for example, we need to, um, we didn't have costs estimated in there for adding sprinkler systems to the building, also assessments that need to be done based on the age of the building and things we may need to mitigate for from an environmental standpoint. So those types of things are in there. Um, but I, I did want to say that the, the, the costs that were allocated to the facade grant program, the A1A streetscape project, and the civic center renovation project, those three line items, the changes we made here were a, a, a cost neutral change. So when you look at your um, CRA plan and you look at those line items for this coming budget year, you'll see the numbers are different, but the total of the three is the same as what we've got here. And um, I believe that is the, the primary information I wanted to share with you in, in the report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. The Civic Center yes. question here, 175 or whatever number, is that just for the engineering and the preparation of it? Uh, no, it does include construction costs. Um, the first phase that we're going to construct is going to be the south side of the building. It's the restrooms and the, um, the, meeting rooms. the two meeting rooms. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay, so that would be phase one for 175-ish. Correct. Okay, and then there'll be the additional at prior budgeting. Okay. Yes. So and when future, you talked about the sprinklers, years. that's just the sprinklers on that side of the building? Um, well, we're actually, we're not sure yet. We're waiting on cost estimates from the engineer and the architect for um, the whole building, part of the building, and we're also talking about um, sprinklers and we're talking about um, fire suppression alarm systems too and wiring the whole building now versus part of the building now so we're, we're still waiting on costs but those are all things we're looking at that have changed the cost scope okay that building there to this side we said we we're going to do solar is that solar for that side <laughs> too or is it the is it this whole building complex or is the solar only going to take the city hall the whole building? Both of them. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah. Okay. That was mine too. Are you asking? Okay. I have another two parts to that question. Okay. Yes. Is it the whole building? Okay. So yeah, I, to answer, so the bill that we get from FPL is for this whole building. Okay. If that's your question. Well, yeah. my thing is when we put solar up. Yes. The solar is both 
sides of the building will be operating on solar? Yes. Okay. Okay. The cost funding for that, because a portion of this building is in this, or the whole building, is, is the whole building in the CRA? Mm -hmm. Yes, but we are paying for the, because of the use of the building, we're paying for, the electric costs come out of general fund, general fund budget. Okay. Yes. So, so they won't affect right, I the just CRA. Want, because it's in the CRA, right. I just want to make sure accounting-wise we're correct there. Yeah, no, that, that's comp the, um, the solar installation and the change to our, our cost for electric, um, that will all be affecting the general fund. That's Even though the property is in the CRA. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. I have no other questions. Okay. No. Um, thank you. You're um, At this time, open up for com public comment on agenda item number six. <laughs> it's a good thing you got her. <laughs> we asked Gabe if he wanted to speak, but he, he didn't speak. His, his, his picture didn't say anything. David Check, 635 Central Court. When you were talking about the uh, page two of the budget, numbers in the budget, can you change the 143 to uh, 243 to 143? Uh, to 142, 564, yes. Okay, close enough. For me. <laughs> um, ordinance, does that pair it up with the, the one, the county's payment right below it, the 210? Yes. Most of the time those pairs, since we're doing 65 and they're doing 45, ours is larger than theirs. And why is that smaller? Oh, the 65, 35 is actually on the, the previous page of the agenda item, the, the TIF excess return. It That's says here August, based on the August 20, 2013, okay. My mind says 243, just for the so I know where we are, the second item. I, yeah, I see where you're at. It says transfer to the general fund for the local agreement dated August 20, 2013, in the CRE in Brevard County. And the very next one says exactly the same thing, it says in Brevard County. Yet, ordinarily, when they're paired like that, it's 6540, uh, 6535. So okay. I, I'm, so I'm not sure that. I, I think I know what you're asking, uh, Dave. And, the 65-35 split that you're talking about doesn't apply to these two. It applies to, on the first page of the agenda memo. That's all? It, it applies to the excess TIF return and ex to, the, to the city and to the county on the first page at the bottom. That's where the 65-35 rests. The 195-770 to the 105 I'm just saying most of the time when I see those pairs, they're in that ratio. So that, that's good. it's caught my attention. If, uh, yeah, it's a, the, I'll, I'll call you or something about it. I know what you're saying. And actually, there's two There's two different, because we have like four different agreements that affect yep. all of this, the, the two at the top of the second page are under a different, excuse me, the second and third bullet at the top of the second page, so the 142.564 and the $208. Right. Uh, that's a different agreement. Hmm. It, wasn't based on, it wasn't based on the ratios, though, I guess, huh? Yeah, Apparently not. Like getting more than we are, I guess. I guess the question ultimately is. Um, okay, okay ask the question again. I'm not sure I'm going to do that. Okay, Try I'll, I'll call you. It's just that yeah. most of my impression, since, as you said, on the income, we get that's about 65 45 split because of the difference in tax, our casting rate. Okay. Our ad long tax rate. And so most of the things that are in there are coming in and out are on that ratio. If you give it back, it goes back to the two agencies, which is us and them. Right. And again, based on that same ratio, because that's the way we put it in. So I guess that, that's the question. I, it seems like they ought to be the same ratio, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you a call. Is it, yeah, I, I'm sorry I can't answer your question fully right now. I, I will look at that and give you a call okay. and we'll talk about it more. Okay. I just think if we either negotiated differently, well, most of the stuff we did was based on that 65, 35, excuse me, 35 split. Right. right. Yeah, I know what you're got, saying. Got to add to 100. Okay. Thank you. So the first one, just so I have it clear too, thank you. <laughs> well, I'm trying to, one is the excess, correct? The first one's excess. Uh, yes. Okay, 195, <coughs> 105, mm -hmm. 6035. Then what, and again, I guess my question too is, why, why are we transferring more per 
what is those figures from? Overage, underage, or the normal? So the, the, the excess return? Yeah, I mean the 142, that's going into our general fund. And then why are we paying the county another 210? That's, that's the agreement that we entered with them in 2013 when Courtney renegotiated um, to save our, to, to give back the reserves. That was the agreement that we made with the county on the reserves so that money was going back from the CRA both to the county and to the city. And that that's was how on, we ended up I getting our that, reserves no, back. I, <laughs> no, I thought that was on unused dollars. But isn't that unused dollars in yeah, the first? Yeah, it's, no. it's unused dollars. Hold on, but it's unused dollars here in the TIF. No, the TIF uh, is different. The TIF is, the TIF is different. Plus, I don't remember it being different. Um, then plus, we pay them, or we pay ourselves, $35,000 payback. Um, that 35 is a special one by the Right. I remember that. This is the tip right here. It's right. It's I know that. Year -end remaining. I, I know that. So okay, let me. Different. Well, what is it? Let me see it's if I can bring this back. I'm sorry for the confusion. Let me see yeah, if I can okay. sort through this real quick. Um, all right, so let's see. First page of the memo, the excess tip return to the city, excess, excess tip return to Brevard County, 6535. Those are, again, related to year-end, what's left in the CRA, revenues, expenditures, kind of all balancing out. The next item on the top of the second page, the 185779 transferred to general fund. That's, again, the interlocal agreement related yes. to public works maintenance. We're good on that. Um, the August 20th, 2013, I, I have the agenda item from that from before just to you know, jog my memory on it. Essentially, this is the interlocal agreement that includes provisions to satisfy county concerns over previous transfers of CRA funds to the general fund for public safety purposes. The total amount returned to the county will be equivalent to the amounts of public safety transfers in the past. So this was this was something from 2013, is my understanding. And so this is a payback item, I believe, from that August 2013 agreement. That's a payback from us to them for their portion of the public service that was provided that, within the CRA? Because CRA because funds were used. Yeah. Okay, All right, I see what you're saying. Because mean. CRA funds were being used apparently at some prior years for public service, you know, and the fire and police. And their portion of the payback, the payback on that. And it's there's a calculation in, included in that, but I don't have that with me. Okay. So to David's point, it, maybe it is a 6535, but I, I don't know that for certain because I don't have the agreement okay. in front of me or the uh, calculation in the spreadsheet. So I'll have to check on that. Okay, so that's the, yeah. the agreement for the payback. Yes. And then that gave us the money to. to reserve. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's and. Part. I'm just saying, yeah. why are we paying them more? Well, that, I mean, that's part. But I'm it's saying, a good question, and I, I'm sorry I don't have that information, but I'll, I'll double check, and, you know, if that needs to be adjusted when the final budget comes, obviously, see, too, that'll be right, correct. That, that's fine. The only reason I'm saying that, too, is. That's almost double dipping because you got 35,000 over here you're retransferring in for the same exact reason. Um, that agreement is from October of 2012. Yes. So I don't know what the, I don't have that back up for you. Supposedly was yeah. the money. Okay, that's fine. I'm, I'm fine with it. I just wanted to. And what I'll, what I'll do because this is clearly confusing and I don't have the best answers for you at this time, but when I get those answers solidified, I will send everyone an email just with sort of an overview of each of these agreements and the purpose to clarify that. And I'll give that to you, David, as well, just so we're on the same page. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. I have a I'll recommendation make a motion to, to uh, recommend approving the 2017-18 proposed CRA Second. budget. Question. Second. I have Question a motion by that. Member Montanaro, second by Vice Chair Osmond. Yes, yep. Further discussion from board? Nope. There are none. Lenore? Mindy Gibson? Yes. Mark Brimer? Yes. Vice Chairman Osmond? Yes. Dominic Montanaro? Yes. Chairman Catino? Yes. Motion passes. Moving on to 
Agenda Item 7, Adoption of Minutes of February 1, 2017. I make a, mo a motion to approve the meeting minutes from February 1, 2017. I have a motion by Member Gibson. I have a second. Second. By Vice Mayor Osmer. Further discussion? Hearing none, Lenore? Mark Reimer? Yes. Dominic Montanaro? Yes. Vice Chairman Osmer? Yes. Mindy Gibson? Yes. Chair McTino? Yes. The motion passes. Any further business before the board? Nope. Hearing none, meeting is adjourned.